everybody, Teach from SeriousGas.com. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Glad you're here today. It's all about bass, that big bad bass today. We're looking at the Bugera Viron, which is the head in my main bass rig that I take out for gigs and use here in the studio all the time. It's dependable, it gives me great tone, and with 2,000 watts, we're talking headroom, okay? Plenty. I never need any more than what it gives me. So, uh, yeah, it's my main unit. Today we're going to take a look at it, playing through it, let you hear how it sounds when I tweak some of the parameters, and then you can decide for yourself whether it's just right for your rig. Let's take a look. All right, everybody, we're here with my Bass Mods bass and having some fun. Plug through the Bugera Viron, and it is pronounced Viron in case you were wondering. Uh, we're running through the Ampeg 1x15. I've got everything set at noon, so we start with kind of a neutral starting point, except for the gain, because the gain, whoo, it's a monster gain pot on this uh, 2000 watt head, and I typically don't even have it past 10. So we're going to start it at 9 o'clock, and then I'll turn it up later and let you hear <laughs> how monstrous it can get. I'll play a few licks, we'll change some stuff, let you hear what the colors do, all right? So now we'll go turn up, uh, turn up the bass. Why not? Let's do that. Let's bass all the way up. Now you can hear the difference. Oof. That's a lot of bass. turn that bass back to normal. Now the mid-range is quite interesting because the mid-range has a lot of possibilities. It's sweepable here at three different frequencies. Right now I've got it at 2.5k. So let's just do a little of this. Just do a couple notes here. Now I'm going to switch it and uh, I'm actually going to turn it up because this will make it a lot more pronounced. We'll turn the mid all the way up. And now I'll change it to 600. Huge difference. Bring it down to uh, the 220. Now that area I typically never go in because that's the honky area. Even when I'm mixing uh, any of my songs, that's the area we typically bring a lot of the EQ down. But maybe you might need that area sometime. Or you could do this. You could cut that frequency. I probably wouldn't do it all the way. I'd probably do it more like 9 o'clock. But I typically have the bass up here at 2.5. That's where my standard setting is. Kind of keeps me a little more in the trouble zone if I want to do any popping or slapping. Uh, it comes out nicely there. All right, so let's leave that there. Put the mids back to the middle. And uh, let's do the treble. Let's put the treble all the way up. Do those same licks. Look at how that sounds. You hear a lot of more buzz in the strings, like the natural buzz of the strings coming forth.
that's a lot more obviously high end now for the popping and slapping it actually sounded pretty good i would probably still put a little more bass in though if i had it up that high just to equal things out all right now the compression uh, we'll put the treble back to 12 o'clock the compression i've got at noon let's turn the compression all the way off okay and you can see nothing's happening with the light now if i turn it all the way up Whenever that light engages, that's telling you that the compressor is engaging based on the peaks that uh, your signal is producing. So if I have it all the way off, notice that that green light just stays exactly the same. If I have it in the middle, which is where it was, watch that green light again, you can notice that on the pops and slaps, it's definitely engaging, but on the normal melodic stuff, it's typically, typically not even doing anything. So that's kind of where I usually have it. Actually, I usually have it at about 11, because I like to hear dynamics when I play. However, if I'm in a very, if I'm in a larger band, basically the more people that are in the band, <laughs> the higher I turn the compression, so it can cut through the mix more. Um, so if I'm only doing a uh, three-piece, uh, my standard is to have it at 11. Uh, four, I might have it at 12. And if we're doing stuff with horns and stuff, I might even have it all the way to 3 o'clock. But you can tell when it engages because of the green light. You can see it getting greener and dimming and such. Uh, I do have the negative 15 on. If I take that off, it's much louder. Almost always play with the negative 15 dB on again because this 2000 watt head is it just produces so much more than I typically need but um, if you're playing larger stages you may actually want to leave that off uh, and also you'll find on my website I put the whole rundown as to how this is hooked up and if you're playing really large stages whereas the bass player you're going to have to go to opposite sides of the stages and you don't want to lose your signal then you would hook this up uh, with another one you'd actually get another one that would run as the slave off of this and uh, have a couple cabs over on the right side as well as the left so easy uh, to answer that if you're playing those big stages you can afford to <laughs> all right so i think we've covered everything mids space comp uh gain oh the gain yes all right, so I'm gonna turn the gain up. This is what it sounds like at nine. I'm gonna turn it up now to 12, which I rarely ever go this high. Just listen to how much gain is in there. Woo! It is getting those tubes cranking. Now, oh my gosh, I gotta turn the volume down. It's getting so high. Let's turn it to three o'clock. Woo. Getting into rush territory there, and finally all the way up. Oh my gosh! I would never play with that much, <laughs> but if you want to have at it, man, sometimes that sound is just what you need for certain types of music. Uh, as I said, typically I'm at nine o'clock gain, about twelve volume. Turn the master up to let you hear it a little bit more. Mid, I usually have it about 1 o'clock. Treble also at about 1 o'clock with the 2.5K as my mid sweep point. And the bass, I usually have it 2. Now also, because my bass mod's bass has sweepable EQ, uh, as well as active and passive pickups. This thing is loaded. So between this and the Viron, I have everything. And no matter what gig I am called on for, this thing will cover it all with these two in tandem. Um, you know, it's just great, isn't it, when you have good instruments, quality professional tools. Then you can handle anything. Got that right. 
All right, so I put it back together in its normal configuration. I hope you enjoyed that look at the Viron today, and I hope you were able to hear, uh, because I had a really nice shotgun mic pointed right at this puppy, uh, exactly how much these parameters can change with just little tweaks here and there. Um, going from 100% left to 100% right is night and day on almost every single one of these. These are not subtle, and I like that because what that means is we can craft, we can hone, we can carve out exactly the tonal niche that we need for a live gig, for a specific venue, or for a studio setting when we're doing a session and we need to fit in certain frequencies from other instruments. Whatever it is, I find that the Viron kicks butt, man, and it always delivers, both live and over and over again in the recording studio on my songs. So that's my experience. I give it a thumbs up. If you have comments, if you have experience with the Byron, Ugera, or anything from the Music Tribe collection, let us know. Tell us what you think. In the meantime, if you want all the really tiny details about this amp, including all the many ways you can set it up and configure it as a rig, go over to the post at SiriusGas.com. I got all the details there, complete with pictures, graphs. You'll love it, all right? So this is Teach from Serious Gas for now, saying go make sound.